1947, pushing the limits. On June 6, 1944, known as D-Day, Allied troops landed on the beach at Normandy in northern France. They began pushing the German troops out of France. In September, more Allied troops arrived in southern France. Marcel and Toulon were freed. By the end of the year, the entire country of France was liberated, and in April 1945, the war in Europe ended for good. Jacques now had a desk job with the Navy, and Talese was sent away to work as a forest ranger. Jacques was not so happy with this. He was convinced the Navy, or so he convinced the Navy, that he and Talese were the more useful underwater. They formed the Undersea Research Group. Its mission was to develop better techniques for diving and underwater photography. They also would train sailors to dive. Talese and Cousteau hired Didi and three additional men, including Maurice Fargs, over the next five years. The group's offices at Toulon's Harbor grew to include a machine shop, photo lab, crew quarters, research labs, and more. They also had an ocean-going dive boat and two smaller boats. For a year, they worked to clear the coastline of underwater mines, they also filmed Le Rubis, a French submarine, as it test-fired torpedoes. Jacques was fearless, floating with his camera just six feet away from where the torpedo sped by. In 1946, Jacques and Didi cave-dived at the famous fountain of Vaincluse near Avignon, France. Every March, water surged forth from this underground cave just like a fountain, flooding the surrounding areas. Jacques wanted to find out why. But in the cold, inky water 400 feet below the cave's entrance, there was trouble. Didi's suit filled with water and he spit out his mouthpiece. Jacques grabbed hold of his friend and almost lost the guide rope that would pull them to safely. safety. The two men nearly died. It became more important than ever for Jacques to find out how deep one could dive and remain safe. Out in the Mediterranean, Jacques went down into the water with a guide rope around his waist. He wore a weighted belt to help him go down more quickly. Small boards were tied to the rope at intervals so Jacques could mark his progress. Jacques made it as deep as 297 feet. He dropped his weight belt and returned safely to the surface. Maurice Fargs went even deeper to 385 feet. Then suddenly, the men on the boat no longer felt his telltale tugs on the line. Quickly, they hauled him up, but Fargs hung limply at the 150-foot mark. Fargs had dove too deep. It is possible for divers at such deep depths to forget that they are in a dangerous situation, remove their breathing mouthpieces, and drown. The crew tried to revive him, but it was no use. Jacques and his men mourned the loss of their friend and teammate. They set the absolute diving limit at 300 feet. Anything deeper was deadly.